Hey everybody, how you all doing? I know it's late, uh, so you know what that means? I'm bring, bringing back the late night movie segment, yes. So I really wanted to do this because today I finally got a chance to see one one of two movies I've been dying to see uh, between this movie and the Super Mario movie. I won't be getting to that, that but I really want to see this movie because one obviously is it kind of piqued both me and Caitlin's interest because we're both into this kind of stuff. And of course, uh, before we even start and start going to it, I actually found out that this is actually based on a real story and a real person. I was like, really? Wow. And, and the more I did, dig, I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Like, this follow, the, follows the story of Gabriel Amareth. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the guy's name. Name, I know he's Italian. Apparently, he was assigned, assigned from the, by the Pope to, to, uh, to investigate this case of this possessed boy in Spain, which, somewhat mostly based on what actually happened and supposedly the real truth is that well some some say it's it's up for debate is that he that this guy is famous for performing somewhere between 50,000 and over a hundred thousand exorcisms well depending on which context how you, how you look at it and so um, so with, with the way they did I'm glad that they were able to take his actual story his account and bring it to life on the big screen and I was mightily impressed Yes, this movie is terrifying. Fine, like I'm not gonna lie, like this, th I did feel like I was seeing like almost like a remake of The Exorcist. In fact, there's not one but a few scenes literally ripped from the original Ex Exorcist movie. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't want to give too much spoilers away. But the one thing that I knew I was, uh, I, I knew where the story was going was literally ten minutes of the movie went. As soon as I, as soon as I saw where they were setting the movie, and as soon as I heard, saw that name, I was like, oh my god, I know that, I know this, because I used to, I used to read up about, about some of this stuff, you know, when doing a little research for some of my, some of my little IPs, and especially the Night Agent series, I was like, wow, I, I kind of knew about this, like, like, is this, this place, this place and, and location is legit. I don't want to give much away. Um, you have to look into it yourself. And, and the story and the movie actually does explain what actually happened. And it's just terrifying. It's just shaking. Literally, I'm still getting goosebumps just, just talking about it because I know right, right then and there, like, as soon as the, the, the setting, the place, and the time period was what they were talking about. I knew where they were going to take the story. And how they did it was good. But again, we'll, we'll exaggerate. We'll over the top. But damn. Wow. I freaking knew just how terrifying this this was. And how deep and dark and twisted that even the, even the Pope himself, played by Franco Nero, uh, didn't even know about. And it, he was he was kept in the dark. In fact, most of the Vatican was kept in the bark, in dark from this dark secret. And I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? Because, again, like, this is something that if you guys are into this, I'd say look into it yourself. If you want to read more about his life and works, like, like there's, he's written somewhere between, he's actually written 30 books, all translated from Italian to English. And, and a, a bulk of his first book is, is translated from this into the movie. So, like, his own account, his own tale. And literally, there's a lot. And I will say a lot of winks and nods to the Exorcist movies. In fact, there's like as far as I had, the only thing I'm gonna tell you is that at one point he's is in silhouette, you know, with the with the trench coat and the hat. Like clearly that's an obvious nod to the famous uh, iconic um, Exorcist movie poster, you know, with Father Marin and the trench coat, which I do kind of find ironic is that Max von Sindow, and we'll call back to Max, Max von Sindow in this movie. I don't want to give too much away when it comes to that part, but you'll know when you'll see it. Um, and then, of course, like I said, and said, there's a couple of m m scenes really ripped straight from the Exorcist, which kind of irked me. But I'm like, at the same time, I'm like, call it a nod, you can call it a tribute or an Easter egg. Like, it depends on how you look at it. But there's one big Easter egg like, near the end, or one big wink and nod is just is, of course, well, not to glider at the end because the last part of the movie, really, where everything's all wrapped up. It's in Rome. Most the majority of the of the story takes place in Spain. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. There again, this just takes you on a wild ride. Lots of scary moments. Uh, I wouldn't say say there's some gruesome moments. It's not as gruesome as I thought it would, but there's just a lot, a lot of grotesque moments. Moments that make you just go, okay, um, yeah, yeah. I think that was a little unnecessary. I know it's exaggerated for the story, but yeah, yeah, you can tell where each where each one of these plots were gonna go, go where everything was gonna gonna, gonna wrap up. But yeah, there's one crazy over the top death 
near the end in, in the final act. I don't want to give much away, but it's a little graphic. Just just word warning. But for anyone that's going going this is with no with no warning or anything like that, it's uh, it's it happens. Okay, but it's still I would say it is possibly a terrifying movie. Uh, I will say like um. And I feel like the I feel like the role does give some justice to the character, even though I feel like maybe some someone probably can say like like I feel like they did him dirty. But here's the thing: the real Gabriel like was always able to mix being being serious with a little bit of his dark humor because apparently, according to an interview, he's like the devil hates humor. Okay, which is true kind of thing because there's there's a lot of moments where I'm like ah I see where they did there. But overall, um, this is poss quite possibly one of the scariest movies I've seen. Thus far this year, okay, it's up there, okay. And of course, yes, I might see the the Evil Dead movie, movie, the new Evil Dead movie that came out, maybe, okay. I'm think I'll think about it, all right. But right now, so far, I'm gonna give the post extras. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a, a, an eight for now, okay. Maybe, maybe eventually I'll I'll give it another rewatch. Maybe it'll be better than I thought it would be. But so far, I feel like the bar is set is set. Like it is is that terrifying? It's it, the story's good. Russell Crowe does a fantastic job. Seeing Franco Nero in this movie was also cool, and which is kind of, kind of ironic because the director also directed the uh, the right, and apparently he was in that movie too. But of course, that's a story for another day. Um, right, rest of the cast is fairly mostly unknowns, but you can definitely tell. You can definitely see a few future careers for some of these young actors. All right. So that does it for today. If you want to see this movie, go give it a watch. It's still available in theaters. All right. So thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for some more awesome and exciting content.